Hello, this video is meant to show you how to upgrade the control system for multiple stepper motors on the MDF Rose Engine Lathe 2.0. The process I'm going to be showing is outlined in the MDF Rose Engine Lathe 2.0 library and a link to that's in the notes below. I'm using a local copy as it's far faster than my internet link will allow because I'm living out here in the country. From the library I need to select the virtual book which is down here on the second shelf and it's the second one from the right it's the instructions for upgrading. So let's click on that. And that actually brings up a web page, but it's a virtual book as it were. And I'm going to upgrade to version 23 at this time, but this same process is going to work for future versions. And I'm doing all of this from my Raspberry Pi, which you can see over there on the right. It's sitting underneath that little pickup truck. And yeah, that's mainly because I have this in my shop. But you could do it from a Mac or from Windows. It really, it works on all of those. So, I'm going to be following the steps as they're outlined, and I'll show you on video as I go through them so that you'll get an example of how fast it ought to be going for you. And once you see these steps, I hope you will be, you can realize how easy this is to do, and you'll be able to apply the upgrades later for yourself. But if you get stuck, I say get one of your grandkids to come do it for you. So, first step is to get a copy of the HEX program for the TNC microcontroller. And we do that by clicking either on the picture here or the text. Now if you wanted to get a prior version you just click on you know whichever one you want. So we're gonna go with version 23 and when I do that with Firefox it gives me a little arrow here that says it downloaded it and I'll click here on the folder to see my download folder and you can see it there for, for rows.hex. I'm gonna need to put a number of the files onto an S, a micro SD card, but this one I don't need to. Okay? So the next step is to get the Nexteon configuration file, and it needs to be the same version. So if you chose to go with version 21 of 4rows.hex, you would need to get version 21 of the Nexteon file. I'm going with version 23, so I click here, and you can see, where is it? Ah, I need to save it. that it put it here. Okay, And this will be get put onto a micro SD card. Um, so I can go ahead and do that now. And it's not terribly critical that this be on a separate micro SD card from the next step. That could be on the same. As you see it's not that big. It's 27 megabytes. Um, and the, the micro SD card that I use is 16 gigabytes. It doesn't need to be very big. The key point though on this machine is don't get more than 32 gigabytes because uh, some of these systems can't read one that big. So when I put it into here, um, if you put it in upside down it won't go in correctly. Just flip it over and put it back in the other way. So let's open up the file manager and you can see that I have version 22 on here. So I can go ahead and move this over here but when I try to do the upgrade, if I leave this 22 on there, it's going to cause it to fail. So I need to delete that file. Now, here's a key point if you do this on the Mac, uh, and possibly on Windows. What happens on the Mac is that it actually changes this name in a way that you can't see it normally, and it's still there as a .tft file, but because there are two files that have this .tft extension, it will fail. So make sure in the Finder window, which is you know their file finders, uh, is the way you look at the folders that you look at hidden files and you're going to need to delete that. So let's go ahead and delete this and move it to trash. And now I have only the, the version 23. So that's good. Let's eject it. Make sure you do eject it. Okay. We're good to go on that one. Step three is to get the 4axis.any file. Now there's only one of these because this file is um, the same for all versions. It's just as we do new versions we add more and more settings here. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And uh, so we only say just get the latest one, it's good enough. So let's click on that and it's downloading. And here it is. So if I just double click on it you can see it's a text file. and what this file has is just all of these settings and where I've changed them from what Ed had set up I've commented 
So this one here is the new one that's on this, uh, which would not be on a prior version because that's a setting that we need to look at here for version 23. Okay. So let's just close that and let's put that onto a micro SD card also. And just to be sure, I'll go ahead and put it on the same one as the one for the next Eon. So now I have both of those files on the one micro SD card. And let's eject that because we'll need it elsewhere on the next step. At this point, we got all three files that we need and we're ready to upgrade our system. Step four is to upgrade the Teensy microcontroller. I've removed two of the sides on the control system and you don't have to take this many sides off, but I've done it for ease of showing you what I'm doing. The first step is to connect the Raspberry Pi to the Teensy. And this requires a cable that has a USB connector, which is hooked to the Raspberry Pi, and a micro USB on the other end, which is what this little bad boy is. It's important to get the cable that's used for communications. A lot of these are actually used only for recharging or for powering devices, and a lot of those don't have connections that allow for communications. So I'm going to show you what it looks like if it works. So if this doesn't work, check your cable first. That's the biggest thing to look at. So what we're going to do is plug this thing into the Raspberry, uh, into the Teensy, which goes in right here. And that's what's shown in the picture here for step four alpha. Then we go to the next step, which is to load the Teensy loader. If you don't have that, there's a link here on how to get it. We don't need this anymore. We're going to follow these steps, but to do that, we've got to go to step four, Charlie, which is to get these two talking to each other. And the easy thing, the easiest way to do that is just to push the little white button right here. And you see how now it actually shows you a picture of the, the Teensy and it's uh, everything's in color. Now it's not grayed out. So let's go down to step four, Echo. <clears throat> let's open the file which is the first button here on the left. And you see here, I've moved this over to the folder that I have for version 23. So let's open that file. Then we need to program the Teensy. So we click this button. Voila, it's done. And now we need to reboot the Teensy. And we're done. So now we're going to go on to step five to upgrade the next Eon. And on the next Eon, one of the things that's important when you're doing this, and first let me disconnect here, <clears throat> is when you're installing it in this slot, you'll see there's a space above the slot on the Teensy that it can fall into, particularly if you're holding it, you know, upright. So I recommend you hold it this direction and be very careful when you're installing it, because if it goes on into the area that's, you know, the black, you know, blacked out area back there, it falls inside the machine and then you gotta figure out how to get it out. So give me a second, let's get that in here. If you put it in upside down, it won't work. It should click in just like that. Okay, and I'll set it here so you can see what's going on. We just turn it on and it's upside down. The reason that it's upside down is because we programmed it to be upside down because that way the slot where the micro SD card is on the bottom down here and dust doesn't fall into it. So you can see it just goes through its thing. Now here's where this would fail if you had two .tft files on here. But because I have only one it takes off and does its thing and once it gets done it will say check data 100% update success and I don't know why it has that language grammar but it does okay so now all we need to do is push it in let it click out remove it turn everything off and that then we go on to the next step version 6 and we need to load the any file now this same micro SD card is where I put the four roses dot any and just so you know what that file looks like in case you want to make any changes yourself 
it's right here and it's just a text file you'll see that all of the changes that I made from when Ed created this I've commented in here this line 15 is the is the big one wow sorry this line 15 here is the one that I changed and we added for version 23 okay but it wasn't there in version 22 but if you had version 22 it would just ignore this line okay so now let's go ahead and load this in to do that we put it into the slot here and it should go in easily enough once it's in I'm going to change where the camera's pointing now so I can show you on the menu how to do this. So give me a second. All right, I got the camera reset. My screen's a little dirty, but please forgive me for that. So the last step we have to do is to load the .ini files to get the settings correctly. So the micro SD card is right here inside the Teensy. And we turn everything on. Switch here. So let's give it a few minutes to start up. As you can see down here on the bottom, it says version 0 or 0 0.23. That tells us we're on the correct version. So now to load the any file, I click on the Preferences button here. Then I click on More. And I click on Load Any. Now this is going to take a few minutes, so just let it do its thing. The way I know it's not loaded is because Make Steppers Enabled, or Keep Steppers Enabled, is not selected. So this does take... Uh, oddly enough longer than you would think. I could do a little dance but you'd see it be off camera. There we go. Comes up with a message that says done, restart may be required. Take it from my take it from me, you should restart it. Okay. Okay, so now we've upgraded to version twenty three and we need to turn the system off put the covers back on hook everything back up plug everything in and then power it on and get going making some dust on the uh, lathe so thank you for watching i hope this has been useful for you bye bye